What's going on, smart people? We've all heard it's all Greek to me, but if you're a physics major, this is no longer just an expression. Physics is riddled with Greek letters. So today we're going to be going over what I think are the most commonly encountered Greek letters in undergraduate physics, as well as what they're usually associated with, which means we're not going through every single letter. I'm sorry, I can't, there's no, no one uses Omicron. Or at least if someone does use it, I'm not thinking, oh, that's the Greek letter Omicron. I'm thinking that's a normal O. So let's kick things off in alphabetical order. <laughs> And we're gonna start with alpha. More specifically, lowercase alpha. I will differentiate. Now, alpha is one of those, I was gonna say particles. Alpha is one of those variables that can mean a bunch of different things. It can mean angular acceleration. It can mean coefficient of thermal expansion. Uh, but what I usually associate it with is the fine structure constant. It tells you how strong the electromagnetic interaction is. We could also mention the alpha particle, but let's steer clear from particles named after Greek letters because let's face it, that's pretty much all of them. Okay, fine, we will at least talk about alpha and beta particles. An alpha particle is just a helium nucleus with two protons and two neutrons. Moving on to beta part, beta, not beta particles, it's not about particles. Moving on to beta. We're gonna kick beta off with beta particles. I'm sorry, this gets better, I promise. A beta particle is just another name for a special type of electron. Because why have one name for something when you could have two names for the same thing? Now what I usually associate beta with is in terms of special relativity. It's the velocity of some object that's traveling divided by the speed of light. It's a dimensionless quantity and it's never bigger than one. It's associated with something I'm about to talk about very soon that dictates how much length contraction or time dilation something undergoes. Moving on to lowercase gamma. Lowercase gamma is something that I either associate with something to do with light or special relativity. If it's a associated with light, it'll usually be the subscript. For example, P is the momentum, and if I see a P sub gamma, I will think they're talking about the momentum of some light, some photon. Similarly, if you go into just a gamma standalone, I will assume it is the Lorentz factor gamma, which explicitly tells you how much Lorentz contraction or time dilation is going on, and it's written in terms of beta, the same beta we just talked about that is the V over C. From a thermodynamic standpoint, though, I've also seen gamma used as the isentropic expansion factor for ideal gases. Now, since we're on gamma, I might as well bring up capital gamma, which is a physical thing, but you might not encounter it in undergraduate physics because it'll either be used to describe the gamma function, which generalizes factorials to the complex plane, or the Christoffel symbol, which is basically a correcting term to make sure that the covariant derivative is still a tensor. Now on to lowercase delta. Now lowercase delta will usually be one of two things. It'll either be in terms of a variational derivative, which will be, say, if you're in classical mechanics and you're taking derivatives of a functional, or it'll be the Kronecker delta, which says that if the indices match up, your thing is multiplied by one, and if your indices match up, your thing is multiplied by zero. I almost forgot lowercase delta can also be used to describe the delta function, which I don't really want to get into. Either a Fourier transform just happened or an integral is about to happen. It fixes your limits of integration. Now you're probably already familiar with capital delta, which is normally referenced to be a change in some non-differential limit, meaning you're not letting things get arbitrarily close together. If there's some quantifiable difference between them, you will talk about that difference using the delta. Moving on to lowercase epsilon. Lowercase epsilon means that you're probably in the realm of electricity and magnetism, and it is always associated with the electric permittivity of space. Normally you will see it with a little subscript zero, which means that it's the electric permittivity of free space. I like to think of it as telling you how easy it is for electric field lines to pass through some medium. Moving on to lowercase eta. Eta can be used to describe various different things, like the efficiency of the Carnot heat engine. It can be used to describe viscosity, or my personal favorite, the Minkowski metric, telling you you that your space time is flat, dog. Now let's talk about lowercase theta. Theta, everyone knows, is an angle, but which one? Well, it depends on whether you ask a mathematician or a physicist. For physics, it's common to use theta as the polar angle, being the angle from the z-axis downwards. Now a capital theta can be used in physics as well to denote the step function, which is commonly used if you're solving the Schrodinger equation for some step potential or something like that, and its derivative is actually the delta function because it has an infinite slope there. Now on to lowercase lambda. Lowercase lambda is usually reserved for talking about some kind of wavelength of a particular wave, but it's also frequently used to describe the eigenvalue of something. I don't know the best way to describe an eigenvalue, but think of something acting on something else, getting this thing back times something, and that's something we call an eigenvalue. 
There is some mathematician right now watching this video who is just getting infuriated at that hand-waving definition of an eigenvalue, I'm sorry. Now, capital lambda is almost exclusively used to talk about the cosmological constant, which is the rate at which the universe is expanding, but you'll sometimes see it referred to in terms of perturbative or Taylor series expansions. Lowercase mu can be two things. It's either going to be some coefficient of friction or permeability of free space, which relates magnetic flux and the concentration of field lines. Lowercase nu is sometimes used as a substitute for F when talking about the frequency of a wave. Moving on to lowercase c. Lowercase c is a letter that I personally refuse to learn how to write, but I've only seen it about two times in undergraduate physics. The first of which is when talking about EMF, electromotive force. Typically if you have a circuit problem with some kind of battery or something like that. And the second time is finding power series solutions to the quantum harmonic oscillator and using this dimensionless quantity c as a, uh, as a substitute in for this one term. Now I could talk about lowercase pi, but I mean it's it's just pi. It's the three point. Let's say it together. Three point one four one five. Uh, other stuff, but uppercase pi is different. Uppercase pi is similar to sigma in that, say you were to sum something from one to three, sum over n. Well, that's one plus two plus three. If you have a capital pi, that means to multiply. That would be one times two times three. Now on to lowercase rho. Now there's two things that rho could be. It could either be some kind of radial term, say you're either in polar or spherical or cylindrical coordinates, or it'll be some kind of density. That's really all there is. Speaking of sigma, now we're on to lowercase sigma, which I could be forgetting something, but I think I've only seen lowercase sigma when talking about the Pauli matrices, which are observables that correspond to measuring spin in certain directions. I guess it could also be associated with things like stress or shear, but that's not what I associate sigma with. Now when it comes to capital sigma, that always means add that stuff up. Now onto lowercase tau. Lowercase tau is a parameter, is a time constant actually used to parameterize RC circuits. It's also sometimes used as the parameter for proper time in relativity, meaning the clock ticking in that reference frame that's traveling. Phi can be used for two things, either the azimuthal angle going from the x-axis up to the y-axis, or it can be used as the time part of the solution to the Schrodinger equation. You can also see phi used to denote some kind of scalar potential. Now the Greek letter chi can be used to describe the electromagnetic susceptibility, which if you'd like to know more about, you should check out my video on two index tensors. The next letter is probably the most reserved Greek letter in all of Greek letters, and I'm talking about psi. If it's lowercase, it's talking about a wave function. If it's uppercase, it's talking about a wave function. Sometimes uppercase will be used to just talk about the spatial and the time part of the wave function, with lowercase being just the spatial part, but regardless, it's a wave function. Now the last letter that I'm going to talk about is omega. Lowercase omega is used to talk about some type of angular frequency. How fast is the angle changing? So you'll commonly see this variable when you're talking about something that's oscillating or maybe rotating. Capital omega is probably the only Greek letter that's used as a unit in physics. It is known as the ohm and it is a measure of the resistance inside of a circuit. And that's going to do it for this list of commonly used Greek letters in physics. I know I actually pretty much ran through all of them, but the cool thing about nature is that it doesn't really give a shit about what you call it as long as you're consistent. So you'll see these Greek letters used to describe different things. In the comment section, I want you to let me know what else you've seen these Greek letters used for, and I'll see you guys there.